Hey, Susan, here, please. Yes, this is Susan. Susan, it's Stephen Weiner calling from Whistle Realty, brokered by EXP. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I am just giving you a quick call. Um, I literally just received an inquiry online about a property in Carlsbad that it looks like you were looking at at 123 Main Street. So. Oh, yeah, that was, that was me. Yeah, and it was literally less than a minute ago. So I just wanted to reach out, see what you're looking at, what information I can give you on the house, and just find out where you're at with your, your housing search. So... This particular property is in in, uh, in the Carlsbad area. Is, is that where you're you're looking? Yeah, mostly Carlsbad, um, Vista, San Marcos. But I'm really just you know looking right now. I'm not really set on buying because honestly, I've, I'm waiting for or hoping that the market's going to crash. Sure. And, um, I mean, there's a lot of us crossing our fingers because the price, uh, I mean, the price of, of real estate has gone up so much from uh, pre-COVID to after COVID. And then we had a bit of a dip at the end of 2022. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. And I, I thought that was, you know, the beginning. I thought that was where it was going to keep going. Right. But now it seems as though it's picking back up. And so now I just don't know you know, what's happening. So I'm just watching. And and that's the thing. And and I wish we all had a crystal ball, but here's where I want to dig in just so I can maybe give you a bit more foresight. So have you ever heard people that say, oh yeah, you know, interest rate used to be 18%. You know, you ever hear those people that, that said that many, many, many moons ago? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so when interest rates were 18%, I think housing was like 30, 50, 70, 80,000. And then as we had inflation over all those decades, you know, price points of houses went up, but then again, there's just a certain level of affordability. And all of a sudden we started to get used to lower interest rates again, but then the pricing skyrocketed, right? So people are very, very payment focused in the real estate industry. Well, pretty much in any industry, right? What is it gonna cost me to get a car, to buy this, to buy that? Everything is about a payment. And when we look at, what happens in real estate if we're waiting for a crash that may never come? I don't know, right? We don't have that crystal ball. There's a couple things I can tell you about this market right now. And maybe that'll just settle you to a degree because I want to give you a bigger picture. Now, if the market absolutely falls like crazy, what do you think is going to happen as far as the amount of competition? Do you think that if everything got to a point where it looked acceptable to everybody, that no one's going to buy any real estate and it's going to hover at that level? Or do you think competition will start to jump back into the market? Because it seems like payments right, will be reduced, affordability mentally seems like it's back. And all of a sudden, just like this seems too good to be true. Do you think that if the market crashed, that everybody would just sit out? Honestly, I'd I didn't think about it like that. Right. So there's a lot of different ways to look at this. But what I want you to understand is at this particular moment, values did go down. They are starting to creep back up. And that's kind of an anomaly to me. But even though the rates went up, what happened was inventory went down. And because the competition for property, again, is pretty fierce, what do you think will happen? Now, let's just talk about today and not just fictitiously if it all crashed and all those things. But today, with very little inventory, let's just say interest rates went down from where they are now to what we're hoping that they'll go down to so that things are a bit easier to afford. What do you think will happen when those rates fall? Um, I guess everybody's going to want to buy. Everyone's going to want to buy. And then what happens if we don't have high levels of inventory, the rates come down, and all these people start deciding they want to buy. What do you think is going to happen? That's when the competition starts. And with the competition, what were people doing in 2020, 2021, and half of 2022? Were they putting in crazy, ridiculous offers, way over ask? Oh yeah, I heard stories. Right? 
And some people wanted to throw in all their children, right? Just to make it that much easier on their life. So, I mean, those, those are the realities. If we really have a crash, something that's going to be extremely substantial, then that's a world event. Then everyone is going to suffer. If we're just waiting for inventory to all of a sudden pop up, remember, we're in a housing crisis. The state of California actually has mandates around housing crisis right now. So they've created things like SB9 for more density, right? Lot splitting or putting on ADUs or what we would consider granny flats. Have you heard of all those things going on in the past couple of years, Susan? Yeah, I have. Right? Um, wow. Well, making me think about things here. <laughs> so that's my job. It's not to say yes or no. It's to give you a bigger picture and have you look at different angles of all of this. Because realistically, again, if, if I spoke the way I put it into like a logical order, if let's just say a bit more inventory trickled out. Right now we're hovering around the 1.1 month of inventory mark. Meaning if not one more for sale sign went up, we'd be out of houses in just over a month. A normal healthy market for absorption is about four and a half to five months that it would take to absorb. So again, unless some absolutely insane world event happened, I really don't see us getting up to a very healthy level of inventory. And before that would ever happen, I see interest rates dropping. So to me, the way I'm consulting my clients at this point, or the people that I'm talking to like this to give you food for thought, is think of it this way. If you spoke to a lender, which I'm not sure if you have, have you spoken to a lender at this point yet? No. Okay. So if you spoke to a lender and they gave you a payment that you could stomach, I'm not going to say you're going to be happy about it, but if you can stomach, then what will happen is eventually at some point, the rates will improve and they'll become better than where they're at today. So you've already locked in the price of your house, right? If you buy a house, you lock in the price. But what we don't lock in is the interest rate because the interest rate fluctuates. So if we lock it in, let's just say hypothetically you bought a house today, you locked it in at the current market rate, which you're not thrilled about, and then it went up, well, you're gonna become a bit more thrilled, right? Because it's like, wow, I got in under. But if you've already bought the house, have the rate, and then the rates drop. Now what happens, Susan? What happens to your payments if you refinance at a lower rate? Well, then they're going to drop. They're going to drop. And then what's everybody else going to do that didn't buy a house in the market when the interest rates come down? Probably cry. <laughs> right? Because the competition is going to start to jump back in. So that's what's going to happen. So you're just securing a position for yourself in today's market. And again, with the areas that you talked about, they're very desirable, right? I would love to get you in touch with a lender just so they can give you a lot more clarity and we can see what a payment structure would look like. But with all these things, if you just sit out, I'm not sure if you're owning or renting right now, but what, what is your, your position as far as where you're at? Are you owning or renting, Susan? I'm renting. You're renting. Okay. So you're basically paying somebody else's mortgage, right? So you, right. Don't, you don't get any deductions. You don't get any write-offs. And all you're going to do is continue to make mortgage, uh, to, to make rental payments and mortgage payments for someone else. But if you bought something and it was yours, then all of a sudden you start to get these incentives as well. So there's a lot of different things that we don't consider because we just get focused on one thing. And that one thing scares us. So we don't think of everything else. We just focus on that one thing. So when, when the time is right for you, Susan, is there a professional like myself that's helping you navigate the process to get you ready and prepare you? No, I haven't talked to anybody about it. Okay. Well, I, I'd love to have uh, an in-depth conversation around this, connect you to a lender, and really put a fantastic plan together for you. So are you open to me connecting you to a great mortgage lender that can give you a better idea of what this will look like? And then also forecast, at, let's just say conservative rates for the future. So they can show you what will your payments drop down to when everything improves. Are you open to that conversation? Yeah, let's do this. I want to find out more now. 
<laughs> okay, so what I'd love to do Peaks is... my interest. Right. So what I'd love to do is connect you to them, and if things all of a sudden triggered more, right, of the interest, and then that kind of upped the level of, hey, I really want to do this. You said you're renting. Are you locked into a lease for a while? Are you month to month? Can you share any of that with me, please? Yeah, I'm in a lease, um, but I think it's up in five months. In about five months? Okay. Yeah. And um, and again, I I don't know if there's a professional like myself that's helping you with all of this, but is there anybody in your world currently that's helping you put all this together for when the time is right for you? No, it's just me. Okay. Well, again, I, I, I just want to earn the right to work with you. I don't want to ask for it. I just want to show you what my team and I can do so that you can feel extremely comfortable as you can see how we unpack this process so that you have more clarity. Does that sound fair? Okay. Yeah, it does. This okay. has actually been a really helpful conversation for me. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect you to a lender. I'm, I'm going to put just a three-way email together so that everybody has each other's information. And then once the two of you communicate, I'll reach out within the next 24 to 48 hours. And then we can schedule a time to meet in person so that I'm not just some voice on the phone, but we can get to know each other personally, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Susan, you've been great. Thank you so much for sharing so much time with me. And you'll see an email come through pretty quick. And then I look forward to reconnecting and scheduling a time to meet, okay? Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. All right. Bye. Bye.